Hello and welcome to another Do As We Do Live. I'm that Kimberly. And this is Jill. I'm that Jill. <laughs> Sorry, I missed my cue. <laughs> it's okay. Um, you, Kimberly. <laughs> We're, we're back again for another Do As We Do a Friday. Um, we appreciate everyone joining us today. We're going to be um, talking about um, my brain spec imaging results. So super excited to share those and why I went to go get them done. Um, but yeah. Before we jump into that, I just wanted to remind everyone that um, we are here every Friday. Um, we try to do our best with that uh, 3.30 uh, Mountain Standard, uh, 4.30 Central, and um, 5.30 Eastern Standard Time. Um, so we're just spreading the our knowledge and information around being caregivers and uh, sharing other caregiver stories because Do As We Do is a nonprofit foundation that is here to focus and help those um, unpaid family caregivers that often forget, are forgotten and often forget about themselves um, and forget on forget about how to take care of themselves. So we're here to just remind folks, remind those caregivers, share education, um, and awareness around caregiving. So wherever you watch us from, make sure that you either subscribe um, or you, so that you can get the notifications when we do go live. We are live on Do As We Do's Facebook page on um, Jill's um, YouTube Caregivers channel. Living abundantly. Oh, yes, on Caregivers uh, Living Abundantly, as well as Do As We Do's Twitter and YouTube channel as well. So Without further ado, <laughs> let's jump into this. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, so this is fascinating stuff. It, it's it was it definitely was uh, an experience uh, to say the least. <laughs> um, so I um, actually went to um, get my brain scanned last month after doing a little bit of research. Um, before I actually show this image, let me let me back up. Um, Jill, have you have you ever heard of a spec scan? Uh, no, I hadn't before you told me about it. <laughs> I hadn't either. Um, and I actually had not ever even um, gotten a um, an MRI or anything like that. Right. Like and even when my mom was diagnosed, that, you know, this is something I wish I would have known about um, to go get her scanned as well. But I, about eight months ago, discovered a, a doctor by the name of um, Dr. I want to get this correct, Daniel Amen, um, who was one of the first psychiatrists that started um, doing spec scans to his patients to figure out what was going on in their brain. And the spec scan is used um, to be able to show blood flow, the activity in the brain um, as it relates to the blood flow. An MRI is more of a structural, um, you know, um, scan, and um, this the spec scan shows that if you know high, or I should say, n no activity, medium activity, and high activity. I should go the other way, but that's basically. Um, how they figure out several different types of um, what do they call it? Um, I'm, I'm losing I'm losing the words for um, what I'm thinking. Uh, it just show, yeah for well it shows all kinds of, of brain, um, mental brain yes uh -huh. um, so with with Alzheimer's being one that they can see 20 to 30 years prior to there being any symptoms. Which, Huge. yeah, which I was like, what? I need to, I need, I need to know what this is, and 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 I need yeah. to know where I go get one, right? Yeah, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> yeah, sign me up quickly. So yeah, so um, I started going down a wormhole of information as it related to Dr. Amen and what he was doing and what he started 35 years ago. So. Um, 
I, I'm assuming that he's not the only person that does spec scans, but this is one of the many things that he specializes in, um, or his clinics anyway. So um, when I found out that they can see, you know, everything from Alzheimer's to depression, anxiety, figure out if someone is um, bipolar or not, which uh, for me, I was seeking a, a second opinion um, because I was um, actually put on emergency detention um, during uh, in June of 2020. And unfortunately, with that, um, got a nice little three day or so stint in a psych ward. So <laughs> um, with then them giving me a little um, diagnosis of being bipolar. And that was uh, something that I was very uh, what's the word? Um, skeptical about? Yes, very skeptical. Or not uh, yeah, <laughs> um, amongst other things. On top of the medication, does not did not make me feel good or normal at all. So, um, anywho, so um, after doing all my research, reading, listening to a lot of uh, videos, um, I decided to go ahead and schedule um, a spec scan. Um, at one of his clinics that happens to be in the uh, Dallas Fort Worth area. So let me show you the first image. So what they do is tip they it's it's a two day well it's a, it's a longer than a two day but for the the scans um, specifically it that takes two days. The first day they have you come in and you do a um, you do 15 minutes on the computer where you're hitting a space bar whenever you see a letter, but then you um, don't hit anything when you see an X. So you're hitting, hitting the, you're, you're basically stimulating your brain by doing this little exercise on the computer, as well as they're also looking for other things like um, your attention, you know, or t attention deficit in my case, ADD. So, um, so that you do that the first day for 15 minutes, and then they scan your brain. They they put you on one of something I guess that looks like it's you know looks like the MRI, and then it it, it just rotates around your head, uh, and takes this takes these images. Um, then the second day, uh, you don't do anything, and you rest for 15 minutes, and then they scan you again. So you they take the two different scans, or one with your brain being active, and then one with your brain not being active. So. Um, and this was the result. Cool. So um, th this uh, scan area over here to the left of the screen is what a healthy um, spec brain um, looks like. So there's no no dents, no, you know, this is from the bottom up right here. Um, and this is from the right side surface view. This is the... Um, we can't top. see your um your mouse. Oh, okay, they can't. Okay, so okay. Like, well, um, from the top down surface view, as well as the left side surface view. So, um, yeah, your that's. Oh, maybe if I did it like here. Now can you oh, see? There the you go. Yep, we oh, can well. see that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so yeah, so this is top down surface view, and this is left side surface view. So these don't really have much indentions. Um, and now obviously this is where it's, it's the bottom half, I guess, where, you know, the back of our uh, base of your skull, the base of our skull. Correct. Brain stem. Yes. There we go. So and this is my spec scan. So you can see over here some indentions on the um, right side surface view. You can see lots of indentions here to the you know on the underside surface view of mine and and she even drew drew the doctor who gives you a um basically breakdown assessment after they've scanned your brain so these are all her drawings to explain you know the the indentions that are not supposed to be there um and as well as this um top down surface view of my brain where this little um pink area yeah where that's indented it's not supposed to be as well as these these uh little indentions right here and in the back as well so um this 
gave her the um she she basically said it looks like i had a brain injury you know so whether i because i played um contact sports when i was in school um and i had actually been in a car accident but i didn't necessarily go to the hospital you know but i you know there's a possibility i could have hit my head in any of those scenarios whether it's contact sports or the car accident i was in um and never even going to the hospital she said that this is what it this is similar to someone that might have had some sort of brain injury so um that was very eye-opening uh, yeah. to me for sure yeah um so this is the activity flow of of my brain so again the um this is the active view on the under side of my brain right here and you can see the healthy you know uh view on this left hand side and then the and the colors are red the white is super you know active red is you know pretty active and obviously no you know just the no no light up is low right like we're in, in these gen with the blue just kind of the way it's supposed to be um but she definitely saw the ADD in me um, with with a lot of the different areas being um, pretty hyperactive, as she called it, in my brain, um, mm -hmm. blood flow, um, or there the lack of in some areas, like certain parts down here that she circled, there should be lit up and they're not. She mm -hmm. said a sleepy cerebellum is what she, you know, both left, like I had a left, um, was it left side? Yep, no, I had a left side. This is the bottom the bottom part where the circle is, is the back of your brain. Yeah. So, so, but she was saying that this side right here should be a little bit more lit up and this not so much lit up right here. So, so that's your right side. And the first side is your yeah. left side. So, um, and she did, you know, she said that there was no signs of Alzheimer's. Um, and, oh, thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> yay. That was a yay um, from, from Mr. Pup. And then the, um, and that there was no signs of bipolar. So that was good, you know, in, in for my overall results that, that I was seeking the second opinion on the diagnosis, the misdiagnosis that I had from being in the hospital, as well as my worry of, you know, having Alzheimer's or, you know, coming down, you know, having any kind of symptoms. Um, but she did say because I had a um, the the brain injuries from the the first slide that I showed this one right here that that um, could in the future cause dementia. Mm. So that was interesting to for her to you know she basically was like did you were you in a car accident? Did any of these things happen? And when I kind of walk through them, she just said, well, this is this is just similar to what somebody who has suffered some kind of brain trauma. And I and I know I've well, and I've uh, seen some studies and some articles written <clears throat> quite a few actually about um, the connection between uh, dementias and um, the brain injuries from war. Mm -hmm. And also from sports like mm -hmm. football and soccer and high, high, high impact sports. Yes. You can get your head bashed a lot. Yes, absolutely. So it's, it's some, it's, it's just, so it's something that I need to be aware of and work on now because it, the brain, because this, these, this doctor and his doctors at these clinics have proven over, you know, 30 plus years that if you, do um a you know if there's 11 things that they recommend um that we should do or stay aware of to keep our brain healthy so um because i do have um signs of you know uh damage to my brain um uh, on the out on the outside you know or the surface level she said that I would need to work on, um, and she went through, uh, which I'm going to show some of the things, she went through the 11 different um, risks, and six of them I need to really focus on to be able to heal my brain. 
And that's amazing because nobody else is doing this work. Like everybody else is just saying, well, that's too bad. Um, deal with mm -hmm. it. There's nothing we can do. And if they are doing something, they're giving somebody a medication that might address one symptom. Yes. One kind of symptom, group of symptoms, but it doesn't address the other things. And the things that I've learned about the brain recently is that so many things contribute to um, cognitive deficits and memory problems and things like that. It, it's not something a pill can handle, period. Yep. You need to, to do a lot of different things to, to help your brain. And mm -hmm. your brain is either in protection mode or it's in uh, building mode, growth mode. Mm -hmm. and you can't be in both. You're mm -hmm. either in protection mode, which means you're cutting yourself off from nutrients, or you're in growth mode because you don't need to protect your brain because it's okay. Mm -hmm. So it takes a bunch of interventions to figure out where your brain is and get it to the right place. Yeah. Well, they and, and they break it down very, this this doctor has written several books and, and they're one of the many um, that talks about these scans, you just go to amenclinics.com or Google Dr. Daniel Amen, um, but he created this acronym for people to remember um, the risks or the the eleven things that we should all do to oh, protect cool. to protect our brain. So this was a part of my assessment, and the ones that are checked off here are the six that I need to work on. So. Um, the, fir the first one, bright minds. So the, the B in bright minds stands, stands for blood flow. So making sure that if that, that I'm getting enough exercise to get that oxygen and, and blood flow pumping from, you know, from my, my heart to my brain, it's very important. So I need to work on that so that that way I can heal that portion. Um, the R in, in bright minds stands for retirement and aging, which he says, that um, we shouldn't <laughs> retire. We should, um, may, you know, not necessarily quit, but maybe, you know, step back a little bit, but always be learning something new um, and, and challenging our brain, especially after the age of, of, well, I've seen him in talk say after the age of 55, but on the website, it said 65 to 84, um, you're, we're, two times more at risk. So we definitely need to be mindful of learning something new and not isolating ourselves. Yes. That's the other, that's another uh, problem is as we get older, we become a lot more, you know, we have, we're a lot more prone to isolation or isolating ourselves, period. Mm -hmm. um, the I stands for inflammation, which um, you just, you know, and, and if you have any of these uh, periodontal diseases, um, any kind of body inflammation, um, you need to be mindful and, and take supplements to be able to reduce that inflammation. Uh, G is genetics, um, which that, you know, the Alzheimer's uh, runs in our family. So that is also another, you know, they, they he did say that, you know, if you do have that, gen, the, the Brock gene, that you, if you do these things and you're more cognitive of and mindful of these 11 things that you can heal your brain it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get Alzheimer's. Right. Um, Lots of people with that bad gene have mm -hmm. turned around and um, been able to uh, heal from some of those, from those Alzheimer's symptoms and be normal. Be yes. So have a longer, better. yes, a, a better cognitive life, um, it, especially as we get older. Yeah. Um, the H is for head trauma. So watching, making sure that we're, you know, if we, that if we did play contact sports, so we're more mindful, um, if we are, or, um, you know, bicycle riding, doing different activities like that, that we protect our head because it is, it, you know, something that, um, should always be protected, which I never even, you know, I was like, oh, I have a, my head, you know. <laughs> Strong, you know, not necessarily <laughs> not good. I just rock. Yeah. <laughs> um, toxins. So cigarettes, um, alcohol, any other environmental toxins that we've been around or grew up Lysol. with. Lysol. Like, just saying. Okay. <laughs> um, 
are, are also things that can damage our, you know, our brain, the structure of our brain. Um, mental health issues, whether it be um, from chronic stress, depression, PTSD, any, any um, bipolar disease, any of those, um, but also being, you know, mindful in meditation. So focusing, if you, if you already have a history of those things, controlling that um, stress level by doing some sort of prayer or meditation. Um, the uh, second um, I in Bright Minds is for um, immunity infection um, issues. So anything like autoimmune deficiency, Lyme disease, uh, HIV, syphilis, herpes, anything like that, that you might have, uh, you're going to be prone to. So you need to take the pro appropriate medication or, or supplements to be able to uh, make sure that it's not affecting our brains. Um, and then neurohormone deficiency. So low, you know, for women that, you know, if their hormones are out of whack and they don't know what's going on, they definitely need to go get their um, hormones checked. Same thing with uh, men and low testosterone or women, low testosterone. Um, and then D is for um, any history of diabetes or obesity. Um, and if, and and or if we're overweight, we need to, you know, it, it can definitely cause um, problems for us, in the, you know, when it comes to our brains. Um, and then last but not least is sleep. Sleep, so sleep, sleep. <laughs> yeah. So I have a problem staying asleep. Um, and it's very important that we get seven to eight hours asleep. I never really thought much about that before COVID. So very important. Yep. What do you think of Bright Minds? I think it's amazing. <laughs> and I think it's really cool that they showed you exactly the things that you need to focus on the most. Makes me want to run out and get a spec scam. Scan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Spec> scan. <laughs> um, yeah. The, the, I actually hit the, the disclaimer thing, which that was an accident, but I, I will make sure I put that up. This is not a, a for sale or, you know, advice, medical advice. This is just something that I found was very important that I go have done um, because I was worried about it. I was worried that, that I, one, one would have Alzheimer's and, you know, therefore I wanted to be prepared so that whoever I was going to ask to take care of me or do um, whatever they were going to do, that that it was definitely something that I I knew in advance. I, I didn't want somebody just to take that on and us, you know, kind of guess at it. You know, that's what do as we do. We preach being proactive and talking to your loved ones about your care in the future. And so this was a part of that step for me. Um, and Melanie Style says, thank you for sharing this information, Kim. Much love. And I agree, Kimberly, you are incredible to to just be so willing to be so personally uh vulnerable and to um share all of this with us so that we can learn yes. because it's, it's kind of hard to learn when you're just talking about other people's stuff but when we're talking about our, our own, own stuff we can teach someone yeah this is me and this is what it shows and this is how i am and this is what they said and i wasn't sure about this and and all the things it helps us to really see yeah. what's going on yeah it, uh, thank you. I, I, I mean, it's, I found that it, it has gotten easier the more that I get comfortable with this journey um, because, and, and because I find that more people, the more honest and open I am about my journey, the more others feel that comfortable in sharing theirs safe. and, and yeah. yeah, and they feel safe and whether it's going to be to me or I'm hoping that it'll be to someone else that they, that needs to hear it you know in the time the right time that they need to hear it that that person will share their story with someone else because they got comfortable with me when they when i did the same right and vice yep. versa so um, taking lives right and yeah. life. <laughs> we're trying trying um them they also did this um this is just you know without going too far into a wormhole you know they they give you a you know like I said, the for me, out of the eleven thing, the eleven risk factors, I need to work on the on six of them, and so um, 
when it when it came to blood flow, you know, for me, I need to one, these are 10 additional things that I can do, you know, whether it's drinking more water, which I do, I drink lots of water, um, playing some sort of it says racket sport. Um, but I'm assuming it's just anything with that makes you exercise and have some sort of coordination, right? <laughs> yeah. I thought that was funny. Um, the get assessed for sleep apnea if you snore or stop breathing at night, which I do not, thank goodness. Um, you focus on seven hours. It's so crazy how much our sleep plays into so many different aspects of, of this, right? Like sleep comes up several times within the this acronym. I think, um, it, I think our sleep the reason um, our bodies uh, are so hell bent on getting us some sleep, like you can't just not sleep mm -hmm. for very long. You can yeah. for a little while, but your body forces you to sleep. That's yeah. how important it is. Yeah. And we, and when, when we fight it, it, it's, it's bad. It, it definitely causes us to, to not be, not think straight, not, not make rational decisions. Like mm -hmm. you name it, it, it definitely, causes a lot of things that as I've gotten older, I've realized I absolutely need it before yeah. I, when I was younger. Oh, I can sleep when I'm dead or, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'll, make, I'll make up that sleep. And, and I, you know, and, and I, I feel like I, I did do some of that, but as I got into my forties, I realized how much better I felt when I had a full seven to eight hours of sleep for sure. Um, so, um, I like Putting number up, six. Yeah, number six, a small piece of sugar-free dark chocolate. Um, putting blue light blockers on your phone. That, that makes a lot of sense, the light. Um, ginkgo, omega, three fatty acids, green tea, and... Reservatrol. Okay, what is that? Reservatrol. Um, I'm not sure what it is. Okay. I think it's a... Uh, blood pressure thing? Medicine? I'm not sure. Okay. Well, they typically uh, start with supplements that they prescribe and then they go into prescribing and kind of, this is was not prescribed to me, but um, because it was just the exercise factor that I need to make sure uh, to get my, because I, everything else I was doing um, minus the exercise factor to keep my heart rate over 30 minutes, 30, I'm sorry, 100 beats per minute. Reservatrol fights aging, protects the skin, and improves the overall appearance of skin. Reservatrol also improves, oops, this thing got in the way. <laughs> fine lines, skin firmness, hyper, hyper pigmentation, elasticity, texture, and radiance. Hmm. It's okay. antioxidant rich and calming, anti-aging properties. Oh, well, maybe I'll have to check it out. <laughs> I could always use some nicer skin. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> um, and then under the retirement and aging, the they give 10 key factors uh, to for stop smoking, limit uh, charred meats, which I thought was quite interesting, which I don't eat a lot of, of red meat or charred meat in general. Um, get your ferritin levels checked. Is that having to do with our... Probably has to do with iron, just okay. from the hair, hair, Okay, I imagine. Uh, donate blood, try a 12 to 16 hour fast, which I do the eight to 16 fast, um, where I eat for eight hours and I fast for 16. Wow. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's a lot easier than you anticipate for sure. And once you get on a routine, you know, of, of not, of get, not starting to eat until like 11 or 12, it definitely, it, it makes your body feel better. Um, yeah. with everything. Um, consume more plant antioxidants such as organic blueberries. Well, anything that's antioxidant is good for sure. Number um, six, again, my favorite. <laughs> number, I'm all you read, read number seven and number eight for me. Acetyl, acetyl L or I carnitine. Uh -huh. I don't know what that is. And N acetylcysteine. We'll have to Google those. Mm -hmm. um, staying connected is is extremely important. I know that more than ever. Um, looking at 
you know, how my father has disconnected from the world and seeing how that's affecting him and, and the way that, you know, when my mom does stay connected with, you know, her friends and, and other family members, just how that brings her energy level up as well. Um, and then start a daily practice of learning something new. So it's, um, something that, that I, all these, these things are, can be implement, implemented, not immediately, but over time, I, I'm taking one at a time to make sure I hit all six, um, and do the things I need to do to get my brain back where it needs to be healed. So that way in the future, cause she did say with the, with the, um, the, in, you know, the brain injury that I could develop dementia in the future. But time, it take you know, having that time on my side, well, or not on my side, depending on how you look at it, <laughs> that now that I know these things and I can do these things that hopefully in the next two to, to three years, my brain will heal. Yep. Next, we have in, inflammation, which I'm not going to go through all of these, but I just, you know, um, I, I encourage everyone to go check out um, you know, the Amen Clinics uh, website and, you know, or ask your doctor about a spec scan because it's definitely something that has given me more peace of mind um, and giving me, giving me more tangible action items, as you can see, that I can actually, that will actually affect my brain in a good way. Let me see. Okay, I want to show one other thing while you. This was the other thing I was going to show. Ha! Now I thought this was something that was. Can you see that? Yep. So this shows just the different effects from um, different ages. These are, you know, all ages, all ages, healthy brain, healthy brain up top. And then it goes at age 17, um, four years of marijuana, age 22, four years of smoking, age 38, six years of opiates, um, age 32, four years of cocaine, um, age 45, 10 years of alcohol. Wow. That looks like Swiss cheese. And then age 28, three years of meth. That really makes me sad. So it looks like the ones on the left are the top of your brain, what they look like with those certain things. And on the bottom looks like the underside of your brain. I mean, on the right looks like the underside of your mm -hmm. brain. Yeah, it goes, yeah. Brain stem and up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. That's so scary. <laughs> well, yeah. Good yeah. thing I don't do drugs, huh? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, the the um, well, alcohol technically, right, is also something that I have definitely, you know, my brain doesn't look like this, uh, you know, but it definitely there are, you know, she did say that some of the dents could be from toxins, and that to one of the toxins does, is absolutely alcohol. Mm -hmm. So, considering I started drinking at fifteen, you know, like I'm. You know, I don't drink as much as I used to um, because, you know, now that's just, you know, just different season in my life. However, it makes me still cautious and wonder, well, I don't want to totally give up having a nice, you know, glass of wine or, or something to drink when I'm socializing. But it, I definitely feel like, OK, I've drank enough in my years past that I think I'm good with just isolating my drinking habits to when I socialize with my friends or I go out, you know, for a, you know, dinner or networking and things of that sort, because same, of, same as how any of us should, um, should approach, you know, sugary goodies, you know, we, it's okay to have a treat here and there, but not every day. And definitely not all day, every day. Well, you know, and, and you talk about sugar, she said complete, removal of um all sugar and processed foods so yeah, sugar, processed unhealthy foods. yeah unhealthy sugars which is everything but you know well, every, all kinds of you know minus the fruit the natural fruit sugars and um and and like you said you know lower 
you know, having a treat every now and then, but sugar is what puts the plaque and, you know, and yeah. those processed foods is what it's, is what's causing a lot of our illnesses and especially what causes that plaque buildup in our brain for Alzheimer's. Yeah. That's the insulin resistance that mm -hmm. causes us to, and having too much sugar increases the resistance to the insulin and how, how well it can process the sugar. Yes. Yes. So I wish I would have known that early on as well. Me too. You know, <laughs> could have, should have did a woulda, but it is definitely something that now that I know, I, I try to not keep sugar in the house or get things that are sugar free um, or more natural. If I do have a sweet tooth or my mom, you know, especially for what my mom, you know, with, because there are other factors that I have to be, that I need to consider as well. So, um, yeah, so I would highly recommend, you know, if you're worried at all or you make any or if your family ma member makes any kind of joke about, oh, well, it runs in our family. I'm probably going to have it. Make them go get a scan. Yeah, <laughs> because, you know, like the one of the main things that this doctor talks about, he says, wouldn't you want to know if you're going to get hit by a Mac 10 truck? No, Jill. <laughs> I mean, when she want to prepare or get out the way, right? That's the way he looks at it, right? He says, if you're going to be hit by a truck, wouldn't you want to get out the way? Right. It's basically, and I'm like, absolutely. I want to get out of my own way and not rely on someone else to take care of me. Right. And, you know, and that's what, and that's really what it comes down to is we, we should stop, even though it's, it's a, it is a cycle of life. And, and, and I understand that, that our, you know, that we do this as a generational thing, but we still, as a, we need to change it by talking about it first, you know, not saying not to do it, but just giving our, our family members, our children a little bit more of a heads up Some than awareness. just, yeah, awareness of what they're, what, what they're going to have to go through as well as what you as the individual are going to be you know, going through because it's stressful for everyone. Mm -hmm. Would you not agree, Jill? Oh, I would so completely, absolutely agree. Yeah. Let's so. cut down on all our stress. Yeah. <laughs> By just having a simple conversation, that's what it comes down to. <laughs> yes. Um, so again, like I said before, do as we do. That's why we started. Our mission is to, you know, consistently educate people, provide resources um, to the caregivers who either are still struggling with whatever they're struggling with or just jumping, becoming, jumping or being thrown into. I shouldn't say because you do jump into it or you get thrown into it, one of the two. Um, but that's what do as we do is here for, to educate, build awareness and help caregivers financially when they need it. So very important. Thank you, Kim. <laughs> no, thank you, Jill. We, I appreciate you so much. We make a pretty good team, I guess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so next week, uh, we'll, we're going to wrap this up. And um, if you all have any questions, again, make sure leave them in the comments. Uh, if you're interested in getting a spec scan or wanting to know more about it, um, aimingclinics.com is, is definitely a place you should go um, to go do some more research or, or ask your own doctor for sure. I want to make sure people understand that. Very, very important. Um, this is not any kind of medical or financial or any other kind of advice. This is, I'm just sharing my experience just so you know, I'm throwing back up the disclaimer. Just Kimberly so. doesn't have any connection with Amon Clinics. No, not at all. <laughs> she had no affiliations. No or affiliate. Yeah, yeah. They're not. Max or anybody. Correct. <laughs> correct. I just want to share my experience. So that way, if someone else is struggling with the same kind of um, going through this and, or they're, they're wondering or they're having anxiety about it, like, you know, I did wondering what, you know, what do I need to prepare for? What's what's going to happen to me in the future? Um, do I need to be on medication for the rest of my life? Um, all of it, you know? Yeah. I, and I was, so many people now, <clears throat> partly because of nutritional problems and, and toxins and stuff, so many people now are being misdiagnosed. Mm -hmm. They might have, um, you know, uh, 
a physical problem and be told that it's a mental problem, or they might have a mental problem and be told, you know, that they have a physical problem. And it's just so easy to not really know. And mm -hmm. it's really typical for doctors to not know without a lot of thorough testing. And it's not because the doctors are not capable. It's just mm -hmm. that there's so many factors in somebody showing up at the doctor's office and saying, this hurts and I feel this way and I'm thinking that and and I can't do this and, and whatever. Like there could be a lot of reasons. And so um, for psychological reasons, <clears throat> the um, medical field um, psychologists have been the one field that doesn't that doesn't typically historically do any kind of scan like mm -hmm. you break your arm you go to the doctor they do an x-ray or yeah you have a, a torn rotator cuff and they give you an mri or whatever they yeah. just they just send you first and see exactly what it is and yeah not, not when it comes to your brain not when it comes yeah. to psychiatry yeah and they should we should be getting instead of a cluster of symptoms getting diagnosed from a cluster of symptoms we should get our brain looked at, scanned, mm -hmm. and then they diagnose us based yeah, then, on and at activity. Least them a, a much better idea of what might be going on. Then they can talk to you about your history too and kind of connect the dots. You know, were you were you a football player or yep. you know and that's what she did. That's what it was there was a two hour in advance um session with the clinical person um, and then another session before the spec and then the two spec scans and then a session with the doctor and then there'll be a follow up with the doctor. So like, you know, all of it, it now I have a true look at everything and and then they give me, you know, an assessment with here are all these things you can do here, are these supplements if you wish to take, you know, and if if it came down, you know, I'm already ADD, so I'm already on Adderall, but it's good to know that I'm that that where I am on all of it. And, yeah. And, and it's good to know that you don't have bipolar and have to take this crazy medication just because you had one meltdown that anybody would have had in yes. your situation. Yes. And that, yes. that story. <laughs> like, and a lot, and a lot of people have gone through a lot of, I feel care caregivers, whether they're a caregiver of their children or a caregiver to, you know, of someone, an elderly, you know, dementia, whatever they're, who they're a caregiver of that it, a lot of down. A melt, anybody can melt down. You can have, yeah. a, you know, can have, you know, have a mental breakdown if they want to call it or, or um, who knows, but yes, but just to be slapped with some sort of um, diagnosis that isn't true to who you are it, and, and you're having to take that medication for the rest of your life is not, you know, that doesn't make you feel good or doesn't, you don't feel is helping you, you know, you definitely should go get a second opinion. Because yeah, and it, hospitals and clinics that hire doctors don't give them the time that they need to adequately mm -hmm. and thoroughly assess people. Mm -hmm. So it truly, you know, usually isn't that doctors are inept. It's that they're restricted so much by how much they can they can really do in a certain, you know, office visit or whatever. So yeah, for sure. Keep in touch with your doctor. Keep going back and and get the answers yeah. get scheduled for those tests, whatever tests mm -hmm. that you need. And don't let the doctor just like slap you with the diagnosis and give you uh, an arbitrary medication without asking them a lot of questions. Now, you know, sometimes the doctors know exactly what it is and the medication is going to help a ton. Mm -hmm. My happy pill. I was crying yeah. in my doctor's office one day and bawling my eyes out. And he's like, uh, let's get you on something. Yeah. And I, it was out of the blue. I was like, really? I'm not depressed. And it made all the difference in my life. And yeah. so, you know, sometimes the medications are appropriate. And sometimes it's really easy for the doctor to see what you need. Yeah. And sometimes, it, some, and if you don't want to take medication, there are supplements that you, or, or foods that you're lacking, you know, like look into all of it. Don't, and, yeah. and and be okay with with doing the research and asking for a second opinion if you it, or if you don't like if that doctor isn't working for you if you're not you know i always used to feel weird about saying i didn't like a doctor right like that it wasn't you know and it wasn't until i realized that it's okay like if, if i didn't click with that person to find another doctor it's like, recommended you know, it's yeah recommended, to a second right? opinion or to yeah. shop around for the right doctor that you really right. connect with yeah for sure yeah that has your, the right bedside manner with that 
matches up to, to you. Yeah, for, for sure. 100% very important. Um, but something I had to learn for sure. Yeah, I think we all kind of have to figure that one out as we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. I wasn't the only person. No. But, um, well, it definitely uh, was not something that I grew up, you know, getting, you know, once the, whatever the doctor said, you know, back when I was growing up, we we really didn't ever question it. I yeah, don't think that was how it was for everybody, I think. Yeah. So getting second opinion is definitely a lot more uh, normal and okay. It's always been okay, but it's, it's definitely don't feel like you're going to hurt anybody's feelings. And any that. doctor worth his salt isn't going to have a problem with that. There you go. If they have a really big problem with it, then you don't want good, them anyway. Good statement. <laughs> yes, absolutely. 100%. So please go ask, do your research. We want you to feel better because uh, if you feel good and you're caring for someone, then you're going to be able to care for them even better. Um, and you will definitely be able to thrive not just as a caregiver, but in your own, you know, realm, your own life, like making sure because we have to care for ourselves before we care yep. for someone else. We got to have hopes and dreams and and things to look forward to, too. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Get this up in the morning. Yes. So um, thank you again. We will be back next Friday with um, Rick um, from the Juice Market Company. And he's going to be sharing with us our his um, new company, the new cannabis, and all that they're doing over there. Um, so I'm excited to talk to him next week. Thank you, Deborah. We appreciate you as well. Thank you. Hi, Deborah. Um, so yeah, and then after that, we the week after that, hopefully, we will have. Um, Dr. Robert Love on for sure. So, yep, that would be good. Yes, awesome. Okay, well, until next week, we will remember sharing's caring, and it's not about if you die, but it's about if you live. So, don't forget to share your plans. Right. Thank you all. Thanks, Kimberly. You're fabulous. You're fabulous, Jill. <laughs> Bye, everyone.